Hi, Steve Nissen here, and thank you so much for the great response on our survey, our one-question survey about the biggest challenge you have with candle charts. We got over 1,000 responses, and there's going to be a great resource to help me prepare custom web seminars for you, and as well as getting topics for future editions of Highlights. In fact, let's take one of the responses now for this edition of Highlights. So what was asked was, and I'll just read this verbatim, when I attempt to make a trade related to a box range, and just to refresh your memory, a box range is what the Japanese call a lateral trading environment, um, related to a bo box range, it breaks out. And when I make an attempt at a breakout trade, in other words, if the market breaks out of a trading range, it goes back into the trading range, and I love this. I think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> so essentially what he's asking is two questions. First of all, or two, or two concerns. When he attempts to make a trade related to a box range, so in other words, the market's, market's in a lateral trading range, so the market's over here, and he or she may be buying it, and then it does this. <laughs> so uh, it breaks out, and then this is where the trader feels like this. <laughs> Just praying for the market to come back. And the next issue is the second part of the question, is, again, related to the box range, and when I make an attempt at a breakout trade, so in other words, if the market does break out and this, per this trader is flat, he's going to be going short here. Uh, and then it goes back into the trading range. <laughs> so the question here that we'll be addressing is how can we decrease the chances of these scenarios happening? And of course, the answer is with the light of Nissen candles. By the way, I call them Nissen candles because there's so much candle information out there. And a lot of it is well-intentioned, but a lot of it is incorrect. What do I mean by the light of the Nissen candles? In other words, how can we use the insights of the candles? The real focus, the way we could do this, is by using this information. Uh, shown by the title of the slide, candles give you twice the information of the bar chart. And the reason for that is because candlesticks, like a bar chart, they both show the price, but the real power, the real potency... The real insight to the candles is the, the second aspect. And this is what we're going to be focusing on in this edition of Highlights, is that the candles reveal the force, or the lack of force, behind the move. So let's get back to the first issue of uh, you know buying or selling near a support or resistance area. So let's look at what the candlestick line is showing us. The Japanese will say the power of the market is reflected in a single candle line or, of course, in a candle pattern. So let's see how we could use that insight, the visual insights of the candles, to really improve our trading. Okay, so here we have, this is a Forex market, by the way, and I know many of you are you know, thinking about trading Forex. It's a great vehicle. But anyway, um, with this software, the white candle is green and the black candle is red. So same scenario. So here... Again, we're focusing on what the candlestick line is showing us at a support or resistance area. Remember, the question was, or the challenge was, the market was in a box range. And it doesn't matter if it's a box range, you know, or, you know, a, a, a pattern like this. The point is, we're focusing on what the candlestick line is showing us at support or resistance. So this is actually called a descending triangle. Remember, one of the powerful aspects of candles is we could use all Western trying techniques on the candlestick uh, charts. And for those who have my little bit more in-depth educational resources. You know I talk about candles and Western technicals, moving averages, Bollinger Bands, and so forth. But here, it's called the descending triangle. We have lower highs. And this is the part, part we're going to focus on, focus on now is a support area. So the issue he has, the first issue, is buying in a box range, or really buying in a support area, let's say. Uh, the way to increase the likelihood of that working is see what the candlestick lines are telling us at that support. So this is actually a potentially bearish signal, lower highs, and the same support. So what's happening is the market is stalling at lower uh, lower highs. However, the real aspect, and let's look at the candles now, look at what's happening every time the market gets near 123. Again, this is a Forex market, same exact concept, no matter what market we're looking at, stocks, uh, futures, it doesn't matter doesn't matter the time frame either. Bullish engulfing pattern. Bullish engulfing pattern. Bullish engulfing pattern. So if you see something like this, you could see the solidity of the support holding tenaciously time after time after time. So at a minimum, now notice the title of the slide, one of the best ways to make money is I would not be selling here. 
Okay, in fact, if you're a little bit more aggressive, you could be buying because what the candle lines are telling us that support. So what's one of the best ways to make money? Is not to, to lose money. So at a minimum, by looking at how the candles, what the candles are telling us about the psychology of the market, in this case at support, we would know not to be selling short. In other words, look at the loss we would have avoided. And if you're a little bit more aggressive, in fact, okay, this is where you could be buying at the bottom end of a box range or at a support area, you know, whether it's a box range or not. Now, let's look at the second aspect. One of the issues that many traders have is a false breakout. In other words, what the uh, question was about, the market, he'll, he'll be buying or selling on a breakout only to have the market come back into the trading zone. How could we decrease the likelihood of that happening to us? Again, not surprisingly, by using the light of the candle. So here, for example, we had a breakout in the S&P back in January. And this is what we'd like to see if you're bullish, tall white wheel body. And again, I'm not really focusing on Western technicals, but we would normally add volume to confirm a breakout. But when we see this, okay, this is when I would be recommending lightening up in long positions. Remember the question the, or the challenge he had is he buys a breakout. Nothing wrong with buying a breakout over here. I would be long there. But when you see this, that's time to scale back because the candle lines, the small wheel bodies, the upper shadows are showing us the bulls are losing momentum. All right, Confirmation actually came here. We had to close under the prior resistance. But the, the moral of this chart is that if the market makes a new high with spinning tops, that is small wheel bodies or doji, that would be a time not to be following breakouts. We're not focusing on Western technicals here, but one of the Western technicals I look at are Bollinger Bands. They work really well in indexes. Uh, so here, for example, not only did we have the small wheel bodies, but we also had it at the top end of the Bollinger Band, another reason for caution. So, of course, we could always add Western technicals, but the, th uh, the thrust of this highlights edition is looking at the real bodies and the shadows. What are they telling us about the momentum of the market at a, a support or resistance area or above a support or resistance area. Now here, for example, I just drew these red horizontal lines. Uh, good support area. In fact, we had a hammer over here. So here we have a hot on me pattern, a bull hot on me pattern. But once again, be real careful trading on the limited information. We're doing these very short educational ve uh, vehicles, the highlights editions, because there's a lot of nuances. Obviously, we don't have time to get into. So although there's a bullish hot on me pattern, small wheel body, and a long black wheel body, showing the bears are losing momentum. It's not that constructive because this real body is hovering near the lows of this real body. See that? So for me, I like it better when we have a bullish hot on me where the small real body is more deeply into the black real body. And there are ways to confirm this uh, hot on me pattern with prices the next session. Once again, you know, beyond the scope of this session. So to summarize, look at how the candle lines are acting on a support or resistance area. So here, for example, we have a support level. A hammer is increasing the likelihood of the support area is holding. Here we have a, uh, a breakout. Okay, there was a resistance area here, but the breakout, while it looked good here, the market had changed, and this is the beauty of the candles. It gives us potential turning signals in one, two, or three sessions. So if you're long here, we should reassess the long position, and look what would have happened if you offset your long positions or lighten up your long positions, or you could do hedge, you know, a hedge. You buy uh, puts and so forth. Look how much you would have saved by reading the insights of the candles. So thanks, and may the candles continue lighting your path to greater prosperity. And once again, thanks so much for all the valuable questions for the time you took uh, to help me help you.